Let's have a look at the specialized cells of the nervous system. You're probably used to diagrams of animal cells that look something like this, rather blobby in shape with all the various organelles, the nucleus, the mitochondria, the plasma membrane, and so on. A nerve cell, properly called a neuron or a neurone, still has all those organelles, but its shape is quite different. The main cell body of the neuron is here, and it contains all those organelles. You can see here the mitochondrion and the nucleus. But from the cell body protrude a number of thin branches known as dendrites. Actually, the word dendrite means tree-like. Also extending from the cell body is a long, thin tube known as the axon, which ends in more branches called axon terminals or synaptic terminals. The odd shape of a neuron is directly related to its function, what it has to do. In order for signals to travel from one part of the body to another, neurons grow in chains or nets so that one neuron can take a signal and pass it on to the next in the chain. The branching structure of a neuron means that neurons can be linked together and that any one neuron can be in contact with a number of others. In nervous tissue, neurons arrange themselves so that the synaptic terminals of one neuron come very close to, although they don't touch, the dendrites and cell body of a neighboring neuron. That's what's being shown here. This junction between one neuron and the next is known as a synapse, hence why the ends of the axon are called synaptic terminals. But let's look closer. This picture shows a bit more clearly how one nerve cell connects to the next, and the inset zooms right in on the junction, the synapse, between them. So how do neurons talk to each other? How is a signal transmitted from one to the next? Well, let's call this neuron neuron A, and this one next to it neuron B. When neuron A receives a signal, that signal is transmitted as an electrical impulse down the axon of neuron A to its synaptic terminals. The inset diagram here zooms in on that synaptic terminal. The signal causes neurotransmitter molecules to be released from the synaptic terminal. These travel across the short gap to the surface of neuron B. And by absorbing the neurotransmitter molecules, neuron B is receiving the signal and it then repeats the process to pass the signal on to the next neuron in the chain. Think of the neurotransmitter molecules as like a note being passed from one neuron to the next. One last thing to look at is the myelin sheath. The sheath is not shown in this diagram, so let's switch to this cartoon of a neuron. You can see the same basic structure with the cell body, the dendrites and the axon. But here you can see that the axon is covered by a layer of fatty cells known as Schwann cells. The fatty substance in the Schwann cell is called myelin, and together the cells are known as the myelin sheath. This protective layer around the axon is really important for the function of the neuron because it helps the nerve signal to travel fast and accurately down the axon. There are several neurodegenerative diseases that originate from damage to the myelin sheath. Multiple sclerosis, or MS, is one of these. It's believed to be what's called an autoimmune disease, which means the body's own immune system is responsible. It attacks the protective myelin sheaths of neurons in the brain, and this causes nerve signals passing through those neurons to be either slowed down or lost entirely. So even though the brain is working fine and it's sending signals as normal, those signals aren't always received by other parts of the body. And the MS sufferer experiences a range of problems as a result, including numbness and loss of strength and balance, visual problems and other issues.